Hello everybody, my name is Peter Barnes and I am a wedding photographer based out of Nebraska. And a question that I get all of the time is how do I start shooting weddings? And there are already so many great resources on how to book your own weddings that I'm not really gonna talk about that necessarily, but what I wanna talk about are five things that you need to do before you start to shoot your own weddings. So let's get right into it. Number one is you need to practice, and I cannot stress this part enough. You need to practice so, so much. We've all heard the phrase that everyone starts somewhere, and I, that's totally correct. However, in my opinion, somewhere should not be someone's wedding. Think about it from a couple's perspective. This is their one and only wedding, and as a photographer, you're going to be going to multiple weddings over the course of your career. So what that means is that it's not fair to your couple to show up to their wedding not being good and not knowing your gear. You need to have already been producing good work by this point. You need to have good portrait work, good detail photography. You have to have the skill set that's going to allow you to work effectively in a wedding environment. Coming off of that as well is you need to know your gear like the back of your hand. A wedding is not the place for you to suddenly try shooting in manual for the first time. Or it's not the place for you to try out that obscure menu setting that you don't know what it does yet. You have to come into a wedding knowing how your cameras are going to perform in different situations because you don't get the opportunity to try things again. You just have to know. This is also so important because so much of being a wedding photographer is actually not about the photography. It's about your people skills. And the fact is, you're gonna have to be a good people person at someone's wedding. And it's so much more difficult to do that if your brain is taken up by trying to remember what all of the functions on your camera do. That is not the time or the place. So again, practice, practice, and practice some more. Number two is you need to second shoot and network with other photographers. Now, it's kind of a divided opinion on whether or not you should second shoot a wedding before you shoot your own. I've heard of many photographers who have had very successful careers never second shooting in their life. And if that's you, awesome, more power to you. But in the general sense, I would highly, highly recommend that you shadow another photographer as their assistant to a wedding before you start to take on your own weddings. That is what I did, and it was absolutely invaluable having the experience without having any of the liability of being the main photographer. And here's a few reasons why. There's no way to prepare for everything that's going to happen during a wedding. So being exposed to what it's like uh, to have things go wrong, for things to run late, for things to go early, um, it's such a huge learning experience and it makes your ability to deal with these situations much more powerful when you then take on the responsibility of being someone's wedding photographer. The second part about this too is that the more that you second shoot, the more that you're going to network with other photographers and networking is such an important aspect of being a wedding photographer. Particularly if you're just starting out, second shooting can be an amazing way to get referrals because oftentimes photographers are booked. And I know for me, the first photographers that I refer to couples whose dates I'm already booked for are the second photographers that I shoot with on a regular basis. So second shooting for experience and networking is absolutely key. The third point is you need to have backup gear and you also need to make sure that your gear is up to the task. And there's a few things that I mean by that. The first thing is you cannot shoot a wedding with just one camera. Now, I, I mean a couple things by that. You can totally go through the day just by shooting on one camera, but you need to have a second camera in case anything goes wrong with the first camera. Again, this is your couple's one and only wedding. Saying you can't shoot it because your camera broke is not an option. Now, if the concept of having backup gear is really daunting to you, there's a couple things you can do. The first thing is you can rent a second body. Let's say you've invested a lot of money into a really great camera body. Um, you might not have the funds to purchase a second identical camera body, and that's totally fine. What I would recommend is renting one of those camera bodies for the weddings you have. Generally, 
you should be charging enough as a wedding photographer to be able to cover the cost of you having that second body. Uh, otherwise, you can buy a slightly lower end version of your camera. For example, if you have like a 5D Mark III or a 5D Mark IV, you could buy a 6D or a 5D Mark II. Just something that can use all of your current lenses and will work pretty similarly to what you have. The next thing too is you have to make sure that your gear is up to the task. And what I mean by this is that consumer cameras are going to be a hindrance in your career. Now I know that gear is not everything. And while I agree with that, there still is a certain standard of gear that clients have come to expect. And it's not so much the brand of gear that you're using, but your clients are going to be expecting that you're able to perform in all different lighting conditions and that your pictures are going to be really, really good. And unfortunately, sometimes the consumer cameras just aren't up to the task. The third part about this too is that I firmly believe that you need to be using a camera that has two memory card slots and that typically only comes with higher end professional cameras. The reason for this is guys, memory cards fail. When I used to work at a camera store, I would have photographers come in with broken memory cards with wedding images on them. They got paid thousands of dollars to shoot and the media recovery wasn't successful. And it's not fun having to make the phone call that says, hey, your images are gone. It's not fun to do that. So I would just advise not even taking the risk. It's so common now for cameras to have that. Just make the investment. It'll be worth the peace of mind in your career. The fourth point is sort of tied to the third one, but you need to make sure that you have a solid data workflow. So this is everything after you've shot the wedding. Now I'm gonna have a full video that goes way more in depth about my data workflow, but the gist of it is this. You need to make sure that you're backing up all of your images at least three times before you've delivered them to your couple. For me, what it looks like in a nutshell is I come home and I copy everything off of the SD card to three different hard drives. And that way I know that everything is copied in three different places and then I edit the photos and then I'm able to consolidate from there. Like I said, I'll have another video soon that will talk about that more in depth, but you need to know that you need to have a solid backup workflow. Just having one external hard drive to save everything on is not going to be enough when you start working with more and more couples. And guys, the fifth point is you need to have realistic expectations on what being a wedding photographer is like. And again, this is why second shooting is so important. Like I said earlier, there's no way to prepare for everything that's going to happen on a wedding day. You as the photographer are going to have to wear so many hats on the day to make sure that your couples have a good experience. And along with all of that, you also have to be photographing incredible images. It's a lot of pressure and it is a lot of responsibility. So what I would recommend is second shoot and take in as much as you can. And just be aware that as the photographer, you are going to have so much responsibility and your ability to deal with that responsibility is going to have a huge impact on client experience, which is going to in turn affect how many weddings you're able to book over the course of your career. Guys, that is all I have for you today. I'm sure there are plenty more tips that I could give you. If you have any questions about the tips that I've given or if you have tips of your own or if you have other questions about shooting weddings, please leave a comment below. I would love to talk to you more about it. So thank you so much for watching. You guys have a good one.